SpaceX has just reached a monumental step closing in on the first orbital Starship launch. Most recently, the company officially stated that they have finished installing a total of 39 upgraded Raptor engines on both Ship 24 and Booster 7, the duo that could be tasked with supporting Starship's first orbital launch attempt sometime later this year if both make it through upcoming test campaigns without major issues. As you can see, 33 Raptor engines installed on the Booster 6 on the ship. Booster 7 made its third trip to the pad on June 23rd. Previously, SpaceX used the six weeks Booster 7 spent back in a factory assembly bay to finish installing aero covers, surfaces known as chines or strakes, car-sized grid fins, Starlink internet dishes, and most importantly, 33 upgraded Raptor version 2 engines. Combined, Booster 7 could produce up to 7,600 metric tons of thrust at or before liftoff. More crucially, SpaceX also finished installing most of Booster 7's Raptor heat shield in the same period, completing within six weeks' work that took Booster 4 close to half a year. With its heat shield and all 33 Raptors mostly in place, B-7 should be ready to kick off static fire testing almost as soon as it's installed on Starbase's orbital launch mount. Obviously, building, qualifying, shipping, and installing 33 new Raptor 2 engines on Super Heavy B-7 was already an impressive achievement and produced the most, potentially, powerful rocket booster ever assembled. But wait, what are these bits? There's a lot of guesswork given in the post, but we haven't seen SpaceX confirm anything yet. If you have any accurate information about them, please share it with us by commenting below. Huge thanks in advance. Interestingly enough, the recent pair of photos published by SpaceX not only showed off Booster 7's nearly finished engine section, but also simultaneously revealed that the company has finished installing all six of Starship S-24's Raptor engines, and even part of the ship's aft thermal protection. Taking a closer look at this picture, we can see clearly the differences between Ship 24 and 20, the only other Starship prototype to have six Raptors installed. The most notable change is the addition of a metal framework that covers the entire breadth of the ship's aft, most likely destined to support flat sections of insulation and thermal protection that will partially seal off the sensitive engine, plumbing, pressure vessels, and avionics components located inside Starship's aft. That extra shielding should help limit the extreme conditions that hardware will be subjected to during ground testing and perhaps in flight. Notably, S-24 has completed a good amount of cryoproofing and Raptor thrust simulation testing, which it survived without any irreparable issues. The ship was then returned to an assembly bay on June 9th, where workers have been installing heat shield tiles, finalizing the ship's engine section, and completing dozens of other less visible closeout tasks. This prototype could potentially be ready to return to the orbital launch site any day now. SpaceX also recently finished modifying one of its two suborbital tests and launch mounts for Starship static fire testing, leaving the other mount semi-permanently modified for cryoproofing and thrust simulation testing of future prototypes. Alongside S-24, B-7 also has already completed a significant amount of testing, including four cryoproof tests and one Raptor thrust simulation test. Since its third return to the pad, SpaceX has had several more ambiguous tests, none of which appeared to involve cryogenic propellant loading. It's possible that those tests focused more on Booster 7's pressurization system, perhaps filling its tanks with the hot oxygen and methane gases it will eventually use to pressurize its tanks. It's likely that SpaceX wants to put Booster 7 through at least one successful wet dress rehearsal, using real liquid methane and oxygen propellants before attempting to static fire any of its 33 Raptors. Booster 7's aft thermal protection system also isn't entirely complete, so technicians will need to finish installing several more panels before any static fire testing. Regardless, SpaceX itself is rapidly clearing all unnecessary equipment from the launch site, gearing up for the upcoming static fire campaign. In typical fashion, the company moved Booster 4 to Rocket Garden after being parked in place for more than three months. Simply put, SpaceX is on the cusp of kicking off one of the most exciting and important test campaigns in the history of Starship, the results of which could determine whether the massive rocket helps launch a Starship into space later this month. The company has requested permission for road closures, each a potential 12-hour test window, on July 5th, 6th, 7th, 11th, and the 12th. If all goes well, the fateful flight is just around the corner. While SpaceX is rapidly preparing for Starship's maiden flight, NASA's recent move showed that they could help the ISS stay in orbit without Russia's help. 
Having U.S. capabilities to provide propulsion to the ISS came to the fore as an issue following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in late February of 2022. After sanctions imposed on Russia by the U.S. and other countries who are part of the space station consortium, thinly veiled threats by Dmitry Rogozin, the director general of the Russian state space corporation Roscosmos, indicated that Russia might be terminating its cooperation in space. He also suggested the country might use the ISS as a weapon. The Russian news agency RIA Novosti also showed a CGI video depicting the Russian modules detaching from the ISS. Other volleys on social media from Rogzin and others made for a tense few months, but tempers seem to have cooled lately. Even so, we still need a backup measure in case Rogzin gets crazy again. While the head of SpaceX has intimated Dragon capsules could help maneuver the station, they currently do not hold that capability. Thus, the current solution mainly depends on Northrop Grumman's Cygnus cargo spacecraft, which conducted a successful reboost of the ISS on June 25th of 2022. The Cygnus NG-17 Piers Sellers is the first US-based spacecraft to provide a substantial orbital adjustment to the ISS since the space shuttles retired in 2011. Russia's Progress cargo spacecraft has been the primary source for station reboosts, attitude control, and debris avoidance maneuvers. This reboost of the ISS using Cygnus adds a critical capability to help maintain and support the space station, said Stephen Crean, Vice President, Civil and Commercial Space Tactical Space Systems at Northrop Grumman in a press release. It also demonstrates the enormous capability Cygnus offers the ISS and future space exploration efforts. Specifically, Cygnus fired its gimbaled Delta Velocity engine for a total of 301 seconds, raising the station's perigee by about 0.8 kilometers and its apogee by nearly 0.2 kilometers for a test of this enhanced capability for a standard service for NASA. This Cygnus mission is the first to feature this enhanced capability as a standard service for NASA. The thruster firing on June 25th was actually the second attempt to raise the station's orbit with the Cygnus NG-17. On June 20th, the maneuver was aborted after just five seconds. Northrop Grumman said the abort was triggered automatically and came as a precautionary measure. An investigation by engineers showed that the observed parameters were as expected and acceptable. Of course, since Cygnus has now departed, the space station remains reliant on the Russian sources for any needed maneuvers. And with that, today's episode has come to its end. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.